Before we begin the ceremony, I would like everyone to please stand for the sighting of our nation's Pledge of Allegiance. I would like... I would like to invite Councillor Steve Martins to the podium to lead us in our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, everyone. Please have a seat. Forward. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lieutenant Ricard Resendiz. On behalf of New Bedford Police Department, I would like to welcome everyone here this morning for our promotional ceremony. I would like to thank family, friends, and also my fellow colleagues for being here and to show support for the officers we honor this morning. I would also like to recognize the following city officials who are joining us here today. City Council Linda Morad and City Councilor Stephen Martins. We are here this morning to celebrate the promotions of the following officers. Lieutenant Frank Correa, promotion to captain. Sergeant Nathaniel Rodriguez, promotion to lieutenant. Detective Raul Espinal, promotion to sergeant. Before we start the ceremony, I would like to invite our police chaplain, Reverend David Lima, to the podium to say a few words and to lead us in prayer. Reverend Lima. Could bow our heads. Lord, as we gather here this morning to honor these men who have made a commitment to learn more, do more, and be more in the Bedford Police Department, we'd ask upon your favor, we'd ask for your protection, we'd ask for your wisdom, so that as they go about their duties to serve this city and to serve the department, they will do it with the greatest honor and with the greatest guidance, being led by you to do what's best for our city. We thank you, Lord, for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Reverend. I would now like to invite City Councilor Linda Morad to the podium to say a few words on behalf of the council. Good morning, everyone. Oh, you can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. Okay, I just want to make sure you're all awake. All these things are so high. I need a step stool. <laughs> anyway, um, it's my pleasure to be here this morning on behalf of the New Bedford City Council to be joined by Councilor Steve Martins uh, to wish the good wishes from the New Bedford City Council to these three fine gentlemen who have invested themselves in the city of New Bedford Police Department and who are now moving to a new rank and a new position in their jobs. Um, I want to first begin my comments to the families who are here assembled. I thank you for sharing these men with us over the last um, many years. I know that uh, you support them every day as they do their job. I know they come home and it's very difficult to uh, disassociate their work life and you support them every day when they do come home and I thank you for, the, for that and appreciate you. And I know you love them and you're proud of them today and it's a wonderful day for you to celebrate. To the fellow brothers and sisters from the New Bedford Police Department, I thank you for your commitment to the city of New Bedford and for your service. Uh, you keep us safe every day and we don't say thank you enough. Uh, continue to do a wonderful job, I know you will, and, to, and you will um, continue to be in our prayers and our admiration. And to the leadership of the New Bedford Police Department, thank you uh, as you continue to move forward with new innovative ways to keep our city safe and to uh, move our department forward, we appreciate that. To these three gentlemen who are with us today, um, we appreciate what you have done in your service. We look forward to your continued success. Uh, we thank you for what you have done, and God bless you, and continue, and hopefully we'll begin to be able to stand here again uh, to once again celebrate your promotion within the New Bedford Police Department. Thank you all.
Thank you, Council. I would now like to introduce our Chief of Police, Chief Joseph Cadero, for the presentation. Well, good morning, and welcome to, I believe it's our third uh, promotional pinning ceremony. Real high. Yeah, it might be a little better. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, you know, our distinguished guests, City Council Linda Morad, Council Steve Martins. Uh, we have some other distinguished guests in our audience today, Dr. Rose and his wife Cynthia, uh, here today as well. Um, for those that don't know uh, Dr. Rose, he is the president of the NAACP. Reverend Lima, we're very grateful for being our department chaplain. Family, friends, and my very esteemed colleagues who have showed up here today to support uh, our three uh, promotions today. Uh, families, I would like to reiterate a little bit on what Councilor Morad was saying. Uh, I appreciate your support uh, for uh, these three fine men as they pursued their dream, their hard work at home. I know what it takes studying, taking time away from your family and the stress preparing for these exams to excel and to be at the top of your game, to be on the top of those lists. So I thank you for that. And I also want to thank you already for the future support you're going to be giving them when they come home with some frustrations and, and difficult days because that's just the kind of work that we do. So thank you very much for your support. Uh, of our officers here today, you know, hope soon Sergeant and Lieutenant and Captain Korea. So welcome. For uh, soon to be Sergeant Raul Espinal, as we all know, when we prepare for these exams, studying the books, and those that have lived it, like soon to be Lieutenant Rodriguez and Captain Korea, who've already lived it, that first step to Sergeant is a major step. You go from being on the field, playing uh, with, the other, with the other officers, one moment, asking the Sergeant for a direction and uh, decisions to be made to in a few minutes and a little bit becoming a sergeant, wearing those chevrons, and now all the burden and the decision making is on you. And it's a big leap. All our roles, all our positions in the department are very, very important. But the sergeant, the first line supervisor is a crucial one. That's when you're still a team player on the field. Sometimes you're holding a ball, sometimes you're throwing a ball, but most of the time you're directing your teammates where to go. It's a crucial point where you take our playbook that we have from the department and you ensured that we follow that playbook out in the field. So it's a big job. Those chevrons come up with a lot of weight, as do that lieutenant's bar and that captain's bar. You know, the sergeant, you have uh, you know, all the officers under you. The lieutenant, Lieutenant Rodriguez, will not only have those officers, but also the sergeants. And the captain, Korea, will soon not only have just the sergeants and the men, but the entire district. And our districts in the New Bedford Police Department uh, seemingly the size of some, or bigger than some small police departments. All three very big jobs, and I know they're all up to this position. But we're taking this position, it requires change. And I'm sure you already heard it, Raul. You've changed already, right? People already told you, you've changed. You haven't got those chevrons. But the, the truth of the matter is you have to change. You have to change to fit the role you're going to be taking. Without change, there's no progress. I'm sure folks are going to tell you, wow, I remember when you were here, you did that. Well, that may be true. But we can't be fixated on our past if our future is going to be bright. And it requires change. It requires change on every level. And as you progress through these ranks, you have to change to assume those responsibilities in that role. So welcome to change. Don't be afraid of it. Don't worry about the, the criticism or the critics that may talk about that change. But without it, you stay fixated. Fixated is a term that many use in psychology, right? Fixated in the moment, fixated in drama, fixated in trauma. You've got to move forward and it requires change. Progress doesn't happen without it. We can't do the same thing over and over and expect, expect a different outcome. But in your new role as a sergeant, lieutenant, and captain, I urge you to praise. Praise lavishly. Tell your people when they're doing good work. Encourage them, motivate them. But also, it requires discipline. And discipline does not necessarily mean, you know, you're suspending people. No, discipline, as the word states, and the root word, is disciple. Lead by your example. Lead by that new change, that new change that you're going to take on that you may be criticized for. Lead so that your followers will be disciples 
of you. That's what discipline is. Discipline is when you have, we always talk about being a coach. You gotta be a coach out there. Anybody that's played sports, has been a coach, or played an instrument, and your teacher had to re-guide you, we're teaching the kid how to swing a bat and the technique is off, or shoot a basketball, we stop and we teach them a new technique because we want them to be successful. You want them to hit the ball. You want that ball to go in the basket. You want them to hit those tunes on the keyboard. That's part of discipline. Having the courage to take your peers that you were with just a little while ago and take them aside and say, hey, you're stepping out of bounds, man. Get back on bounds. If you step out of bounds, we've got to give the ball to the other side. We lose an opportunity to score. That's the discipline we're talking about. Having the courage to have these conversations with your officers. Don't be afraid of those conversations. That's where it starts. Relationship building begins and continues with conversation and dialogue and direction. And that's what we need you to do. As you've been going through the ranks, and you've been here for a while, some of you long, I think Frank a little longer than the rest of the, you two, but I think Nate and Ro came on together 13 years. You've been around a while. And as you progressed, you looked at the sergeant, lieutenant captain, and said, well, if I was in issues, I'd do something different. Well, here's your chance. Here's your chance to be the change, to create the change in our department that you so wanted or said that you would do when you were not in a position to make those decisions or to guide the officers. It's time to step up, and I know you will. You know, leadership, there's a lot of books written on it, there's seminars. It's a tricky business to be a leader. A leader. It's a tricky formula to find the right tenets of leadership. But I'll tell you the most foundational piece of it is you have to truly care about your people. And that starts with your heart. If you really care about your people in your heart, like you care about your family, and you treat them as such, and you see them every day, and you look to how you can help them be successful, how you can guide them through their, through their career. If they want a promotion someday, guide them to start studying, to go get an education. If they want to be a detective, guide them to perform well, to get the training through the MPTOC. Advocate for them to their commanders in those units so they have a shot. That's caring. But it's also caring when they're stepping out of bounds to get them back in line so they can remain successful and stay out of trouble. That's caring. It's tough love, the same tough love that we show our families, our kids. It's not easy doing the right thing. And sometimes it doesn't feel good. And for sure, for sure, and I can tell you sitting where I am, it is not popular all the time. But popularity isn't going to win the game. You've got to be able to take some of that criticism to do that tough love, to keep our people that we care about on right track. You need to be fair with everyone you deal with by example and how you treat people. And you'll be criticized for not being fair, but if you know in your heart that you're doing the right thing every day and you're treating our people fairly, and that they're, they're treating our community fairly, you will be able to take that burden of criticism because you'll know in your heart and when you look in the mirror, the guy looking back at you was as fair as he could be. You need to be firm and consistent. To be fair, it's gotta be consistent and it's gotta be fair across the board. High standards. Set your standards high. You gotta raise your standards from whatever rank you came from, whatever position you are. The higher you set your standards, then so will the people that work with you. We know for sure through studies, there's been many done, many done. When you take a student or a high level athlete and you put them in a lower performing class or a team, they will adjust their standards to that norm. And when you take an average player or an average student, you put them in a class who has higher standards and higher talent, you will raise their level of standards to try to reach that norm. Don't lower your standards. Raise your standards from wherever they were, when you were a detective, a sergeant, or a lieutenant. And your people will raise their standards. And the better we will all be. You know, ultimately, there's been a lot of stuff said about leadership. You know, it's not about getting plaques. It's not being recognized for it. It's about taking your team, our team, our team, focusing on our mission, on our molds, our, our goals, getting our people to focus and motivating them so that they can achieve their best, so that they can be successful. And we know in our business, the stakes are high, and so are the consequences. And we're going to lay the groundwork through the leadership that we're talking about, through those tenets, for our team, your team, to be successful. Our officers, our cadets, our civilian employees, our dispatchers. And the more successful we are in serving, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to serve our community. We serve the public, and we serve each other. 
That is true leadership. I think John Quincy Adams, as he said, and I quote him, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you're a leader. And that doesn't happen if you're not caring for your people. I talked about this every, all the time. Don't be afraid of failure. Failure are the steps to our success. I can tell you I failed many, many times. As more recently, I called Steve, uh, Counselor Steve Martins yesterday and I had a conversation with him. There was a gap and I take responsibility for it. But the important thing is that we fix it and we're gonna fix it. As I continue, I know I will continue to make mistakes, but we cannot be paralyzed by our fear of failure. We cannot be paralyzed by the fear of being criticized. We have to embrace that the potentially that we will fail, but there's also potential that we're gonna be successful. And there's also an opportunity when we fail to see what we did wrong and how we can do that better. And that's what I offer to you. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Don't worry about it. It's going to happen. It will happen. But the more times you swing that bat or throw that ball, the more likely you're going to hit it or put it in the basket. I think uh, Michael Jordan has spoken quite often about that. But Colin Powell says, success is the result of perfection. Hard work, learning from failure, loyalty, and persistence. Without failure, you don't get to reach any of that, any perfection, any success. Teamwork, a team. This is what we're talking about, bringing our team together, like unity. And I'll quote, I love quotes, sorry. Simon Mainwaring, and this is what he says. Creating a better world requires teamwork, partnerships, collaborations, as we need an entire army of companies to work together to build a better world within the next few decades. This means corporations must embrace the benefits of cooperating with one another with one another, sorry. We're talking about cooperation internally. We've got to cooperate with each other. We've got to help each other succeed at every rank. That requires unity, understanding, work, willing to fail you, conversation, dialogue. Not only internally, but with our community. We're part of this community. We serve the community. We need each other. And the more we get out there, as I mentioned a couple of days ago, walking and talking with our community, getting to know our people, by now, we're not that much different. And I think what you're going to find out, and I encourage you to get out of your cars and out of your offices and do the same as our offices, you're going to find out how much this community supports us, believes in you, appreciates you, and wants you. And you're going to feel good about it. You're going to feel good about the work you're doing. And it's going to create the teamwork that we need to be successful not only as a police department, but as a community. Unity is strength. As a uh, Stepanek, if I'm pronouncing that right, and I quote, immunity strength, when there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. And that is true. Without unity, you can't have teamwork. Without teamwork, we pale in the level of success that we aim for. We have a responsibility to this wonderful community that we live in, as I said. We are public servants, and sometimes we forget that. We are here to serve the people that depend and rely on us and truly appreciate us. I ask you to embrace, to practice, and encourage and motivate the officers in your team to employ community policing philosophy and problem solving techniques as they interact with the public, whether it's quality of life issues or crime. I know you guys are gonna do great things but I ask you today in your mind to set your goals, to set your standards, to really do the right thing, to make this a better place to work, a better city to live, a safer city. They're dependent upon your leadership and your new role. I know you're gonna do it and I believe in you. We all do, everybody here, and depend on you. So before we get to that, I wanna precursorly congratulate you on all the achievements you're gonna have. And as we proceed, I'd just like to touch on each one of our candidates before we go and give you a little bit of background on them. Lieutenant Career, soon to become Captain Career, came to the United States in 1978, was born in a small island of Brava in Cape Verde. And I'm proud to tell you, and it warms my heart deeply, to say that soon to be Captain Frank Career will be the first Cape Verdean born captain in the New Bedford Police Department. An incredible task. <laughs> he 
He will stand as a role model for all that are coming behind him. Uh, just incredible. Uh, I know he was an avid soccer player. He played for this uh, great little store called Sports Shack, which I'm very familiar with when he was a young man. And I'm told he was pretty good, a pretty good athlete. Uh, I'd like to see him play out there, and I'm sure he's a Benfica as well. Uh, he has a wonderful wife who's been married for a very long time and a beautiful daughter that made a trip up here from Boston. And glad you're back in our great city. Uh, so welcome. But Captain, uh, soon to be Captain Frank Career, joined us in 1993. He was appointed as a recruit and graduated shortly thereafter. He had a slew of assignments to a variety in that uniform division. He worked at Station 3, Station 2, back to Station 3, moved on around. He came down to what was then headquarters, is now Station 1. And then in 2000, he became a detective and he did an incredible job in our detective division. Uh, and I'm sure he's very proud of that work. And then in 2000, and there was a little bit of time then, I can tell you, I love Frank, and he has wonderful qual qualities. And I, I think his, two, his brother and his nephew are here. Or are they, they, uh, they worked for me at Station 1, too. I'm still bugging them, tough buggers, to study for the, for the exam to get promoted. And it took a long time. It took a long time. I was thinking about bringing the cattle prod to start sticking them to get them studied. But he, he finally did, and, and I'm so happy he did because he was promoted to sergeant in 2010. And uh, from there he worked at uh, Station 2 for a little bit. He worked in our communications as a communication booking supervisor. And then uh, it took a little bit more prodding, as you would guess, to push him to study. I'm still working on Shane. Shane was here. I was working on him back then too, but we're still working on him. But in, uh, shortly thereafter, in 2013, he was promoted to lieutenant, lieutenant career, where he stood as lieutenant until today we will be promoted as a captain, worked in uniform for a little bit. And then in 2016, last year, for a short period, he, he was transferred to a detective lieutenant in our professional standards unit under the command of Captain Lido. And then in uh, March, he transferred back to Station 1 as a platoon commander. And he's had a very good career, and we're very proud of him, and we look forward to the great things he's going to do. So. Congratulations, Frank. And uh, sitting right next to him, uh, uh, Ro um, I'm sorry, you gotta get out of line here. My papers are out of line here, but Nate Rodriguez, soon to become Lieutenant Rodriguez. Uh, Nate is a first generation from Puerto Rico, has proud parents who understand were both born in Puerto Rico, uh, Spanish fluent in Spanish. He's been an incredible job in outreach into our Spanish-speaking community, especially with the undocumented Spanish individuals, as you can imagine, have been very uneasy But what's been going on in our country. He's been an instrumental tool for us in reaching and comforting this community. Uh, very proud of uh, his work there. Uh, as a lovely wife, um, who is also here with us, where, where she, there she is, and does a great job. She's an uh, incredible entrepreneur. And his, and his daughter also with him, he has a son as well. Uh, very proud of Nate and what he's done and what he's continued to do. He's been on a job for 13 years. He was appointed as a recruit in 2004, and he was in a uniform division in a variety of assignments, but he worked in uh, headquarters, or Station 1. I believe we were already at Station 1, or getting ready to go downtown. We were headquarters into downtown at that time in 2005, uh, and he, he worked with me there for a little while, and. We're proud of the work that he, he did, especially on a, on a sea shift, as I remember more vividly, the, the work he did there with his partner. Very active, proactive, always treated the public very well. Both those that were stepping uh, outside the boundaries of the law and he had to arrest them, uh, did a great job. And he studied and worked hard in 2013, a short period, really, when you think about it. He was promoted to sergeant. He went to communications and our booking supervisor. He, he did a stint there for a little bit, and then he came, went to Station 2 and back to Station 1. Uh, and last year, in 2016, he went and became Detective Sergeant in Professional Standards Unit, where he's still assigned for till tomorrow morning uh, as a detective. Then he did an incredible work there, also under the fine leadership of Captain Lito, who's with us here today. And today he will be promoted to Lieutenant. I can't tell you how proud I am of him and the work he's done, the work he's going to do. I'm sure as his family is, and uh, he's got a bright future in front of him, uh, intelligent young man. In 2007, he received a letter of appreciation from the Fairhaven Police Department 
at the, in 2007, uh, I was his captain. I too wrote a letter of appreciation for him for the fine work that he was done and received a third letter of appreciation from Mike Career, the director of athletics at the Mifford High School. And I'm sure there's many opportunities where someone just didn't take the time to write that letter, but he's been doing incredible work. And uh, Lieutenant Rodriguez, or soon to be Lieutenant Rodriguez, congratulations. And coming down to our final guy, Raul Espinol. We love uh, immensely, especially for his wonderful conversations in the political venue. I love the stories he comes up with sometimes. I think he could sometimes write for some of these uh, news magazines. <laughs> Does a great job. But uh, anyhow, Raul was born in Harlem, New York, raised in the Bronx by his wonderful family, also first generation. Uh, his wonderful parents who I had the pleasure of meeting are here as well, very proud from the Dominican Republic. Raul Espinol, his first language was Spanish. Second is his second language. And uh, Raul, wherever he's gone, from the time he was in uniform, patrol in the South End, has been very proactive and has had a wonderful talent of engaging the public and getting necessary intelligence that we need to help not only the uniformed patrol officers, but at the time he was passing a lot of great information to our detective unit. And he, he, he's done a great job. He has two children, a boy and a girl, wonderful wife, Jennifer, who um, no, he, he told me he's known her since junior high school and she had a mad crush on him, although they didn't date at that time. And she pursued him virulently, which led to this wonderful marriage that they've had and two beautiful children. That's the side of the story and we're gonna stick to it. As I said, he's a wonderful storyteller. Uh, but anyhow, he, uh, he joined our ranks in 2004. Uh, worked in uniform patrol at uh, Station 1 on the A shift, and the day shift as well as the C shift, and did some work in the South End and back and forth to Station 1 until 2011. They finally convinced Raul because they were after him and recruited him to go to the detective division where he's been a detective um, till tomorrow morning. Well, a few minutes actually, and he's done an incredible job there as the entire detective division, which I, I just want to take a moment, and uh, many of them are here from uh, Detective Captain Al Souza is doing an incredible job there, and Sergeant Mendes, and all the detectives that are up there, and uh, Sergeant Ramos in the gang unit doing incredible work every day, and if you, not everything gets to the papers, but if you do read it, uh, and the level of apprehension that they're doing is just amazing in a short period of time with the help of uniform, of course, and that's a teamwork and unity that I was talking about earlier, so uh, I thank him for that as well, but... <laughs> but Detective uh, Sergeant, soon to be Sergeant Rule, it's about you right now, so we're going to put that light right back. He's done an incredible job there, and we're, we're grateful for you, for it, and I know you're going to do a great job uh, out there and for next week you'll be assigned to our training division a new program that we do with our newly appointed sergeants we put them for five days to give them some additional training and tools so you can be successful so uh, a round of applause to you Raul great job and before we're, uh, Raul also received a letter of uh, appreciation from the child and family service unit for some great work and an additional letter when he uh, from a wonderful lady that we all know and love and has been around for a very, very long time. A letter of appreciation from our beloved Loretta Bork from the South End. Uh, he received a wonderful letter from her and I'm sure there's many other opportunities that he probably should have received a letter like me and uh, Captain Korea. So as, as we're getting ready to move on to the actual pinning, uh, I just want to leave you again uh, a wonderful job that these three individuals have done where they're a mere representation of the fine men and women that we have in the New Bedford Police Department and the incredible work that they do. And if you would just join me for a quick moment and give them a round of applause of appreciation. <laughs> so without any further ado, we're gonna to get to the main event of this, uh, of today, and that's the pending ceremony. So thank you very much.
Korea. Hey, see. I would like to ask everyone here to join me in officially congratulating all three of our uh, distinguished uh, officers.